Forum Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald. Well, you're in the news again, aren't you? In fact, you find it very difficult to stay away, whether it's North Korea or the horrors that broke out in Charlottesville, Virginia, over the course of the weekend. Little bit of background. General Robert E. Lee, who was, uh, funny enough, a friend of Abraham Lincoln's, and yet, when it came to the Civil War, felt he had to side with the South because he was a Virginian. Um, and indeed, any of you that have ever seen or been to Arlington, that incredible national monument there with hundreds of acres of graves going from the Civil War until today, will know that the house at the top of the hill... And, of course, JFK is buried there and everything else was, in fact, General Robert Lee's house. As part of historical revisionism, uh, the town council in Charlottesville, the city council, rather, um, Democrat-controlled, have decided to rename a park to take Lee's name off it and to remove a statue of that great Civil War general because it is said he fought on the side of slavery and, therefore, that image needs to be got rid of. For some reason, and we'll explore this later in the programme, because I think it's a huge mistake, but for some reason, uh, the extreme right, uh, far right, supremacist neo-Nazis have decided to stand up and protest on this issue. I have to say it was quite shocking to see the sheer number of people in modern day 21st century America, you know, raising their right arms to the sky in Nazi style salutes. That then led to a huge counter-protest. As you know, a car was driven into the crowd, somebody was killed, uh, 20 were injured, um, a police helicopter had an accident and two troopers were killed, uh, and they were really very ugly, nasty, violent scenes. Trump got up at the weekend and condemned the violence that was taking place from both sides. Uh, but that wasn't good enough for his critics and for his opponents. And uh, they wanted him to specifically single out the Ku Klux Klan and others. And here is what Trump said a couple of hours ago. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. Now, Trump has said that. His wife, Melania, has said much the same thing. So is Ivanka Trump. And indeed, Vice President Mike Pence today came out in the strongest possible terms. And yet, none of this appears to be good enough for Trump's critics. In fact, it doesn't matter what he says. They will always condemn and criticise anything this president does and attempt to link him directly to the KKK and those far-right groups. In my view, it doesn't really matter what Trump says or does. They will always try and point the finger of blame at him. So, the critics are saying that the campaign themes that Trump fought on during that election campaign, namely tackling Islamic terrorism and dealing properly with immigration, has led directly to a rise in racist violence. Is that fair comment or simply an outrageous slur? And if you believe that the critics of Trump are right and that he's actually given oxygen to these people, then call me on 0345 973 Or if you, like me, think he'd get blamed no matter what he said or did, then text at 84850. And I'm particularly keen to get a USA perspective. You know, if you're there in Charlottesville or anywhere in the States, please, using the hashtag Farage and LBC, tweet at LBC, give us your thoughts and your views. And as ever, of course, you can watch me live on Facebook here in London from LBC studios and our first caller is from the Commonwealth of Virginia in North America. Jack, good evening. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, where are you from in Virginia, Jack? Uh, well, I was uh, born in Charlottesville, actually, uh, and I live uh, nearby. I commute there to go to school. Right. And, and, and how do so. you see... I mean, obviously what happened, uh, the behaviour in Charlottesville, all of that was, was pretty indefensible stuff in every way. Uh, but is it right? I mean, is it right that people say that the president has actually given oxygen and encouraged these far-right racist and indeed neo-Nazi groups? Uh, I, 
I don't think that's particularly fair. These people have always been around, and um, there's been a there's been a rise in, in general in the U.S. and the, the West in general over the last couple of years. Uh, so, so not really. Right. So, so the argument is that in the and you know the southern states particularly that the Ku Klux Klan have always been around. But so you're arguing that 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 Trump has not encourage these people in any way at all. Is that what you're saying, Jack? Yeah, I, I think he should have I think he should have condemned them earlier, but I I don't think he's encouraging it. No, well what he did of course on Saturday was to condemn violence on both sides. So, Jack, there are people like you that think, yeah, OK, it would have been better just outright to knock this uh, you know, on the head immediately but jack you know as someone living in virginia i mean do you do you see a rise in racial tensions or is it more that the modern day battle in america isn't black v white it's actually left v right um uh, i'm not really sure with, with this in particular it's just the uh the, the extremist i think because Antifa and the, the the white supremacists showed up and wrecked havoc on the town. Yeah, yeah. And actually, actually, they can both behave pretty badly. Jack from Virginia, thank you very much for your call and for your perspective. So Jack making the point that actually these extreme far-right groups have always existed in America. There has been a rise of them, as indeed there has been across much of the West. He doesn't think Trump is responsible for this. Um, and, we get, and we're staying in the USA uh, because we do have a lot of people listen to this show from the States every single day. I have to say, I was in Chicago yesterday uh, for the day and I met a lot of people saying, we love your show. Can we please come on LBC? Well, tonight's the night when you've got the chance to do so. So we go to Patrick in Wyoming. Good evening, Patrick. Hello, Mr. Farage. Good. Um, yes, I'm evening. in Wyoming. Yep. Which is a uh, well, it's afternoon here. Just it is. Uh, which is which is a very red state. In other words, seventy percent of the votes cast were cast for Trump yes. at the election. Yes. Um, however, however, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time. Um, I used to do a lot of horse riding, so I know a lot of ranchers and. I get the impression that a lot of them voted for him because they just couldn't vote for Hillary. Um, they didn't like him. They didn't like his... Um, they thought he was a bit obnoxious. But on the other hand, you know, a lot of people here did vote for him because, you know, they liked his message and everything else. However, when you ask about the rise, since Trump sort of started to get ahead in the polls or, you know, it looked like he was going to win... And ever since then, there are a number of people that drive around in pickup trucks here with the Confederate flag flying from a pole stuck in the back of their pickup. But that's but Patrick, and that's that not is, that's that not that's that not new, is alarming. it? That's not particularly new, yes, is it? it? Is. No, that never happened before. We've been here fourteen years. I'd never seen it before. Right. Um, so so that is new. That is new. I mean, I, I'm I'm living in as I say in Wyoming here. All the Democrats are armed. You know, this is. This is even the Democrats are right, are, are right of centre in Wyoming. Oh, compa well, compared um, to you know, so compared to the so. UK, everybody is. Yes, I mean I know. But Patrick, well, no, but, in, but but yeah. Patrick, he so, he he did in the campaign. He did talk about illegal immigration. He's now talking about having an Australian-style point system for future legal migration. And yes, he talked in very tough terms about Islamic terrorism. And dealing with it is Patrick, in your view, is taking on these subjects something that necessarily encourages bad people on the far right? Um, no, not those things. I don't think it was. It was the fact that um, uh, it was the fact that uh, he was getting so much support, which he was not turning away from a number of right wing extremists like. Um, Oh, what's his name? Richard uh, Spencer. I can't remember his name. Well, Spencer. yeah, Richard. For, yeah, know, yeah. Now, he comes. Yeah. He comes from Whitefish, Montana, and up in Whitefish, Montana, is a very kind of uh, extreme um, situation up there with with uh, right wing extremists. They've been marching in the streets up there in the past, 
armed. Now, you know, when you get a bunch of people turn up at a protest and they're carrying rifles, why are they carrying rifles? Peaceful protest. We're carrying mm. rifles. Mm. We're carrying Nazi flags. I've watched it on TV, and I was horrified. Yes, that was... Oh, Patrick. Absolutely horrified. Patrick, I made the same comment on Twitter that I thought it was unbelievable in 21st century America, and certainly Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer, for for those in the UK listening who've no idea who he is, is is a very, very extreme far-right figure. And he, in fact, more than anybody, I think, was behind sparking off the protests oh. in Charlottesville, because you visited there a few Absolutely. weeks ago. Did, so I get that. Also, Patrick, I mean, just to sort of make the picture look worse, in a sense, is that David Duke, the former Grand Master of the Ku Klux Klan, was standing up saying, we love President Trump. So, Patrick, is the criticism not Trump's policies or the debate in the campaign, but you feel he should have done more to disavow these groups earlier? Well, absolutely. I mean, right the way through the campaign and now... It's the way he speaks, and he is dividing the nation. It is the way he speaks to people. He, he's quite an obnoxious individual. Well, I quite um, like him, know, forget Patrick. It, forget but... his policies. Well, I'm, I understand you do. No, I mean, listen, I, understand I think he's... Do, but... I mean, Patrick, I take the view that he's a straight-talking guy. He's a New Yorker who, as you know, live, living there for 14 years, have, often have their very own way of approaching things. I honestly, Patrick, I don't genuinely believe at all he's ever said anything to encourage these kind of people. But I do understand your point that there are these very extreme figures that have stood up and supported him in public, and maybe he should have done more to slap them down and done so earlier. Patrick from Wyoming, thank you for your call. Interesting perspective, and also, you know, he's making the point that the Confederate flag, you know, is being flown around on pickup trucks a lot more than it was a few years ago. Mind you, in this country, when I was a kid, I never saw the Cross of St George. When England play football, it's everywhere. And that can't be the fault of Brexit, can it? You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from London, and it's 7.15. So these scenes of violence and even death in Charlottesville, Virginia, that we saw over the weekend, and horrific they were too. And I I began to wonder, let's delve a little bit deeper into this. As I said at the top of the hour, it was about the removal of a statue after the renaming of a park to sort of expunge the image and history of General Robert E. Lee. And for some reason, he's been taken up as a great cause by the neo-Nazis, as a man they must support, and by the hardline Democrats as somebody who should be written out of history. So just a little bit more about Robert E. Lee. He writes a letter to his wife, Mary Ann Lee, on December the 27th, 1856. And he says, In this enlightened age, there are few, I believe, but what will acknowledge that slavery as an institution is a moral and political evil in any country. Did Lee have slaves? Yes, he did. Did everybody who owned land in America and who fought on both sides of this civil war indeed have slaves? Yes, they did. But when you delve even deeper still into Lee's record, you find that when he was away on military campaigns, the Mexican War and the Civil War, he was insistent that all the slaves on his estate were actually looked after. He even introduced education for the slaves on his estate, and he looked forward to the day when slavery was abolished. He fought for the South. He fought for the Confederates, not because he was a mortal enemy of Lincoln's. He wasn't. He was a friend of Abraham Lincoln's. He did so because he was a Virginian, and he felt that was where his heart lay in this state's rights battle. That is what the US Civil War was really all about. So, I would say this. The neo-Nazis and the KKK are completely wrong to hold this man up as a hero. And equally, those that would tear down his statue or decry anybody that fought on the side of the Confederates in that bloody, bitter civil war in which nearly 700,000 people got killed are wrong as well. History is what it is. The American Civil War is what it is. Indeed, I visited uh, the first Battle of Manassas, or known as Bull Run Battlefield, myself just two weekends ago. It is a tragic bit of American history, but any attempt to rewrite it 
or for those on the hard right or hard left to pick out people like Lee as, hill- as villains or heroes is a terrible mistake, in my view. Please, if you think I'm wrong, 0345 973 and perspectives welcomed from this country and from the USA. And I'm going back to that southern state of Virginia to speak to Gary. Good evening, Gary. Good evening, Nigel. Pleasure to speak to you. Pleasure to have you on. So tell me, whereabouts in Virginia are you, Gary? I am north of Charlottesville by about an hour and a half by okay. car. Okay. Um, I'm in the Shenandoah Valley, which is where many of the battles took place. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, I lived in Los Angeles for many, many years and moved here in retirement and got to know some of my neighbors. And some of them have grandparents or had grandparents that were that remembered the war. Yes. So it's a very personal issue for a lot of people here. And I think that... Um, to have someone uh, like an, um, you know, a, a far left person uh, come from another state and try to, uh, you know, take away what they perceive as their history, is very upsetting and very. Um, uh, it's it's not good. I feel for them. Uh, I personally don't have any uh, skin in this game. I mean, I, I grew up in the West. Um, Gary, so, I'm, I mean, Gary, I have to say to you, I myself. Uh, uh, you know, I'm pretty appalled at the way we're trying to rewrite history or, or expunge various bits of it. We had a similar row in this country about a statue of Cecil, Cecil Rhodes, you know, the founder of Rhodesia, um, that people wanted removed last year. Uh, and in fact, that was overturned. But, Gary, however upset people are uh, about this, does it mean that all those that think back to those times and have some sympathy for Lee or the Confederates, does that, surely it doesn't make them all neo-Nazis, does it? Absolutely not. Uh, these are some of the best people I've ever met. Um, you know, fully upstanding people, um, not the sort of uh, person who would ever try to hurt anyone else. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, there's, there's a vast, vast majority of the United States that is um, perfectly sane, um, in contrast to some people's opinions. And that includes, <laughs> that includes the people who voted for Trump. I was listening to one of your earlier callers who said that his neighbors uh, voted for Trump, a lot of them, uh, yeah. simply because they couldn't vote for the other person. And I was one of them. I voted yeah. Democrat for, uh, what was it, something like, I think I counted them, 23 federal elections in my life. Wow. Um, and couldn't do it this time just because of that person. It's not that I like Trump. I just dislike the other person so much. And, Gary, in your opinion... Has Trump done a, I mean, I, you know, and I, I said to anyone that says to me that Trump has encouraged racism, I'm going sh- to I'm going to shout them down because I just think it's wrong. You know, I know him and the people around him. They're not racist. And I'm very clear on that. But, Gary, do you, in your opinion, as a Virginian living not too far away from where these horrible events have happened, do you think Trump could have done more to, to sort of completely distance himself from any of these people a little bit earlier? I think he could have been clearer, but he could not have been fairer. Um, It is fair, I think, to criticize both sides, the Mm -hmm. far left and the far right, uh, which is what his simple little statement did. He could have been clearer. He could have explained why it is fair to criticize both sides. Yeah. um, And maybe even been more firm to say that both of them uh, should uh, should not be doing this in in, uh, no uncertain terms. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think he was trying to favor one side versus the other. Um, so I, I think it was a, um, an inco- he should have he should have been more detailed, little, little and, bit clearer, a bit earlier. But, yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. It couldn't have been more fair. Yeah, Gary, thank you ever so much for your call. Uh, very fair and balanced call there from Gary, who was voted Democrat 23 times, but voted for Trump last year. He is far from a right winger. But he understands why people feel as they do about the rewriting of history. On Twitter, I get uh, Nigel Farage attempts to suggest Trump has absolutely nothing to do with racism in the US, says Matt. Yeah. All right. Sneery, Matt. Say what you like, matey. But I believe me, it's not what Trump wants Um, on text. Hi, Nigel. It's not just Trump. I have seen your reaction criticised because you dared to tackle the topic of immigration. These Nazis disgust me, but the left must accept 
They existed long before Trump will exist and long after, says Michael. Well, the call from Wyoming made very much the same point. These elements have been there in America for a very long time. Nigel, spot on as usual. It is left v right, and we are just seeing the extremes on the media, says Jane. I made the point that in America, perhaps the real division in America is now that left and right hate each other more than any other potential religious or racial groups dislike each other. Why do I get the feeling that Nigel Farage and LBC will be quite fiery tonight, says Mark? Well, I don't know about fiery. I hope it's a strong debate. I hope it's a fair and a balanced debate too. Daniel in Manchester is my next caller. Somebody from the UK. Daniel, good evening. Hi, Nigel. How are you? Hi. So, what do you think, Daniel? Well, I think that it doesn't help that Trump has come into the White House, and I think these supremacist groups do view Trump as someone who does sympathise with them. Why? And I know you're going to shout me down for that. Well, he's no, no, I never like, actually, Daniel. I never shout anybody down. But why? <laughs> why do you think that? Well, he's brought the likes of Steve Bannon into the White House, who what who does run that incredibly right wing news site. And at the time of Bannon being brought into the White House, you had the likes of David Duke calling his appointment excellent and creating the ideological uh, 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 aspects of where they're going. Oh, uh, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. You know, whether you're a leader who seemed to be on the right or the left, you get people that support you politically, you know, that, that, that you would never want. I had it. I had it. I had people saying, oh, isn't Nigel wonderful? You know, we've been BMP for years, but oh, no, no, Nigel's our bloke now. I didn't want their support, but what can I do about it? And equally, you know, Corbyn, who appeals to the left, will have people who've got convictions for street violence and goodness knows what else supporting him. He doesn't want them either. So it's not actually Trump's fault, Daniel, that a David Duke says something like this, is it? Well, no, but at the same time, you've got Trump's made racial racist statements, possible, well, possibly racist statements in the past when he's, you know, he brought birtherism to the forefront. He was claiming for ages that Obama's birth certificate was a forgery. When he's making statements like that, that really... Well, that, but that's not racism, is it? He's questioning Barack Obama's ethnicity and whether or not he should have been in the White House. I think that certainly does... Well, he wasn't questioning... Daniel, racial, Daniel, you know, he wasn't <laughs> questioning... He wasn't questioning Obama's ethnicity. He was questioning Obama's nationality. At the same time, isn't that a, isn't that a problem? What, why is he doing that? Because well, there was of the colour of his skin. Look, no, there was the because because the law is you can't be president of the USA if you were born outside of that country. That was the reason for that particular, uh, uh, you, you know, birther theory that was going around. And look, Steve, Daniel, I know I know Steve Bannon. Yeah, sure, Breitbart is a controversial site that debates any issue out there, which is why now its Google rankings have absolutely gone through the roof because people want to see, you know, proper naked political debate. But I would not personally, I know Steve Bannon would never put him in the category um, of, of being a racist. I agree with you, Daniel, that some very unsavoury groups have publicly supported Trump. But I, 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 I challenge you to tell me one thing Trump has said that has led directly to people wanting to be more racist. I mean, what I would say is that his lack of saying anything for two or three days, I think that says an awful lot. I mean, you had the likes of Lindsey Graham who were coming out pretty yeah. much straight away to condemn these racists, but Trump, fairly silent on it. No, he wasn't where, where silent. Was he? He, he condemned both sides. Daniel, I've got to go. Time's run out. Trump did condemn both sides. Interestingly, Justin Trudeau, the pin-up boy of the Liberals and the centre-left, said exactly the same thing as Trump on Saturday evening. He condemned both sides. I'm not hearing any criticism of him. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from London, and it's 7.30. And President Trump, the Donald, is being damned for not being clear enough, early enough, some say, in his condemnation of the KKK and neo-Nazis because he came out originally blaming bad behaviour and violence on both sides and some taking the argument further and even saying that because he dared to talk about immigration and tackling radical extremism in his election campaign, he's actually encouraged these far root groups to rise. And I'm taking the temperature of your views on this. I've also tried to give some historical perspective as to who General Robert E. Lee was and why I think, actually, he's the wrong person to be championed by the neo-Nazis and to be condemned by those on my left. Uh, Michael on Facebook says to me, General Lee was a liberal 
who stayed loyal to his state of Virginia who went Confederate. Michael, that was the point very much that I was trying to make earlier. Uh, and now, Martin from Kent says to me, the Ku Klux Klan originally supported the USA Democrats. I don't know whether that's true or not. I'd love to know if anybody else can tell me. Um, other news domestically, Mogmentum, and I know this has been a very much favourite topic of so many of you, um, and we had Jacob Rees-Mogg as a guest on the show just a few weeks ago. So, Jacob Rees-Mogg, in the Mail on Sunday, um, academic Ted Malak, somebody again we've had on this show, uh, American Ted Malak and a friend of Trump, says, I was at a lunch with Jacob very recently where he indicated he would like to be considered for the leadership when the time comes. Mogg insisting that that time is not now. Wittily saying that if he throws his hat in the ring, he feels it will be thrown back at him fairly quickly. But interestingly, has a big article uh, that Mogg writes today in the Daily Telegraph where he puts forward some quite radical policy proposals saying that stamp duty should be abolished because it is a tax on moving and saying he wants to take the Conservative Party back to more traditional values. Everyone says that Mogg does not want to have a run at this now, uh, that he really wants to wait uh, and have a go at this later. Uh, but I'm not so sure. Um, what do you think? I'll tell you what, listen to my interview with him. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg at lbc.co.uk. But just a couple of weeks ago, uh, listen and, and think, is Jacob, is he getting ready? Mrs May is away on holiday. And the cat's away, the mice will play. Talking of which, and I don't know the content of this, but I've had some phone calls from journalists uh, and programmes before this show started at seven, asking me on uh, to do late night commentary. And the reason is, despite the Prime Minister being away, there is a government positioning paper on our future trade relationship from the European Union that is coming out at midnight tonight. I don't know what its contents are. But I wonder, I said a couple of weeks ago that I feared that the great Brexit betrayal may be beginning. We'll know a bit more at midnight. But I do wonder why major policy ideas with regard Brexit and our, our negotiation would be coming out at a time when Mrs May is on holiday. I wonder... Is Philip Hammond really running this government? I have a feeling, folks, that tomorrow night's topic is going to be is the great Brexit betrayal underway? Gosh, I hope I am wrong. I'm going to go back to Manchester for my next caller to LaSalle. Good evening. Hello, Nigel. How are you? I'm very well. So is Trump the guilty party? Has, he, ha has his campaign themes led to a rise of the extreme right in the USA? Um, I don't think so, no. I think uh, years, both sides have been increasingly vocal, uh, both of the spectrum in America. And I think it starts with um, this idea that uh, tr Trump's candidacy kind of sparked left-wing protests throughout America, mainly at places where young people were, units of campuses and things like that. Yes. Um, and slowly these movements, these left-wing movements, became more and more about stopping the conversation between left and right became more about silencing the right and stopping conservative views from spreading. But it's a retaliation of that that's caused... Listen, I tell you what, you've got some interesting points to make here. The line's rotten, LaSalle. We're going to come back to you. We're going to go to Lloyd in, in Lewisham. Lloyd, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Good evening. Um, so, is Trump guilty? Yes, he is. Is and he? He is guilty. Mm. When you're endorsed by the Ku Klux Klan before the election and endorsed by um, Baby Duke and you're asked about it and you don't disavow him immediately and say that you don't know who he is, well, that's, well, I think that's a lie or, or he's very stupid if you don't know who he is. When you don't disavow it then, when after the election, when these far-right um, KKK and white supremacists um, say how much you are their man and... Um, do not salute to you, and you don't disavow them. You are, at the very best, spineless, and at the worst, an apologist and an agreement with them. But if you respond, Lloyd, if you're a political leader and you respond to people like this, all you actually do is to give the whole argument the oxygen of publicity. Many, many times when I was UKIP leader 
uh, when people would say nice things about me that I didn't want or nasty things about me that I didn't want, I'd ask myself, do I respond? Knowing that if I responded, I'd turn it into a story. And nine times out of ten knowing that if I completely ignored them, it would disappear as an issue. But Lloyd, I understand what you've said. Can we, Lloyd, stay with me. Let's just listen again to what Trump said this afternoon. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. Lloyd, he couldn't have been clearer, could he? He could have been clearer. Because Hang on, so, well, uh, so, uh, uh, are you saying you are you clear. saying that's not good enough? Let me explain to you why I'm saying this. Wow. Please. Go on. When, when um, Sadiq Khan made a comment um, about London not to be alarmed to see armed police, within minutes he was tweeting how mealy-mouthed he was. But yet, after this, what did he do on his own soil? You cannot justify this double standard. Either he's one way or the other, and he, he is either spineless for not condemning it straight away, which he normally does on Twitter for everything else and everywhere else, or is an apologist. Which one do you think he is? I think, Lloyd, that you're one of those people who, if Trump went down and sort of grovelled on the ground and said he apologised, if ever... He'd given sucker to anybody, even with vaguely conservative views, let alone extreme right wing ones, that you would still find reason to condemn him. Giving you clear reasons why I believe his silence says more than words. But Lloyd, I've just played you. I've just played you a 20 second clip of what Trump has said this afternoon. And I have this evening accepted the point of view that one or two callers have made that perhaps he should. You know, he should perhaps Nigel, on Nigel, Saturday. Can, can one more thing? On Saturday, have been. But Lloyd, what more can he do than he's done today? Please tell me. I will tell you. Can I say one more thing then? Go on. Right. It would be like me, who has a friend who who has done some um, disgusting things to women, and me saying, "Oh well, it's all right," because you know he's just a bit of a lad, rather than coming out and condemning him straight away, saying, "No, he's not a lad. It's disgusting behaviour." That's what I would do if one of my friends or associates um, bragged about doing disgusting things. Maybe you don't see it that way, but I do. OK, L- Lloyd, I understand you're not a Trump fan. I don't think you ever will be. I do think, Lloyd, for you and other people, he could not have been clearer today in what he said, even if you found reason to criticise him for Saturday. But isn't it funny? No one's criticising that lovely, lovely Prime Minister Trudeau who said exactly the same thing. Or what about Jeremy Corbyn when it comes to Venezuela? Will he condemn the government who've been shooting people in the streets? No, what did Jeremy Corbyn do? He said it was wrong, there should be violence on both sides. And that's OK. That's absolutely fine. If any world leader could look at any conflict and blame both sides and be thought to be fair and to be prudent. But when it's Donald Trump, oh no, he's wrong, whatever he does. That's what I think. Tell me where I'm going wrong, folks. Call me on 0345 60 60 973. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively at LBC, live from London, and it's 7.45. Did Donald Trump's campaign themes of, of tackling Islamic terrorism, of dealing with immigration, particularly illegal immigration, in a much tougher way, and indeed his manner and the way that he speaks, has it led to a rise of extremism in America, or is that simply an outrageous slur? And Andy on Facebook says to me, Farage obviously refuses to acknowledge the part that racist ideologues like Trump and him played in creating the rise of racism and hate crime in America, and post-Brexit Britain, history will judge them. Well, Andy... I've been through a little bit of this myself because a week before the referendum last year, there was the horrendous gunning down and murder of the young Labour MP, Joe Cox, that happened in a street in West Yorkshire. And within 48 hours of that atrocity, it was said that my campaign themes and posters had directly led to the rise of hate that had contributed to that murder. So I know exactly what Donald Trump uh, must be feeling when people say these things about him today. Andy, all I would say to you is this, that what we've tried to do, certainly what I've tried to do through my career in politics, 
is to talk about real, sensible, normal issues, to get us back to a time when discussion of immigration is not shouted down or slated as being ridiculous, but is part of the normal day conversation that we have, not just in our private lives, but in our public lives, in politics as well. Uh, and I utterly reject, utterly reject that I've done anything other with this debate in this country than to try and return us to more normal and sensible times where border control was the right thing for a government to do. A view, Andy, by the way, that is supported by a vast majority of people in this country. Tina says, St George's flags, I mentioned them earlier, St George's flags come out for the football as it's the only time we feel safe to do it without being called racist. Well, it's true, Tina, it's not very long ago when anyone's showing a Union Jack, oh, no, no, you can't do that. It means you must be voting for the National Front. Thank goodness we've smashed, I think, some of that nonsense in this country. Um, no one's come back to me on the truth of the KKK originally supporting the Democrats. Perhaps they will. Somebody with a big historical knowledge of this in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to go down to Bournemouth and speak to Daniel. Daniel, good evening. Good evening there, Nigel. So has, has I Trump... wanted to... Go on. Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to say, has Trump handled this badly over the last few days, in your view? Yeah, utterly badly. Unfortunately, he should have stamped on this much earlier. Uh, although I can understand why he was a little bit cagey about picking on specific groups. Mm. Um, he, he might as well have picked on other groups that have also been equally odious from from the left. I think you touched on it earlier when you said the difference between left and right, uh, rather than between black and white or any other ethnicity. And I think the issue that both Trump and yourself have faced is not that you've given sucker to racists, but more that you've provided a touchstone for people who have felt marginalised in the political debate. And that includes people who are on the more extreme ends of those spectrums. As, as no doubt, Daniel, has Corbyn done on the left? I mean, you know, I do understand that argument. I, mean, I would say, in my own defence, if I may, for a moment, that nobody did more to contribute towards the destruction of the British National Party than I did by taking them head on. So I think, Daniel, if anything, I did a lot to try and smash this stuff down. But, but yeah, you're another Absolutely. one, Daniel, that thinks. I mean, I mean, has Trump got it right today, Daniel, in your view? Oh, 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 absolutely. It's a little bit too too little too late, but absolutely. He's named the groups. He's he's taken it out of the park. It's not even a conversation anymore. Right. You can't say that he hasn't named those particular people. The question is, the question is, will anybody on the left take any notice? As you as you mentioned earlier to a previous wow. caller, there are those people that will hate Trump regardless of what he does or says. I was a, a Trump fan from the very beginning in, in one of the earlier Republican debates. Uh, against Jeb Bush, I knew immediately that he was he was going to be a candidate. There was yeah. no question about it. Very very early in the campaign, he was by far the strongest candidate. Yeah, and, I think and, he is the right. The and and right Daniel, candidate you've you've you've, the moment. you've supported Trump, and just to be clear, you've never thought Trump to be racist in his views or his ideas. Well, he clearly is not a racist. I mean, he he may have he may have some uh, some opinions on things which other people might consider racist because. They haven't. Uh, they haven't listened to what he said. They've just listened to what sure. the, the uh, or what's the, been the media or what's been said. He said it. absolutely, Daniel. Thank you. Superb. I'm going to Darren and Oldham next. Darren, good evening. Hello, Nigel. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm here to give you a reality check about your friend. I'm afraid because I do believe behind the shiny smile, yeah, and the golden yeah. hair is something. Um, not quite right. As Anne Whittacombe once said, something about the dark, about that man. Well, she said that about the Conservative Party leader in this country, right. not about the yeah, President of the USA. Well, <laughs> well, Nigel, let's look at the reality of the situation. Uh, mm. Several years ago, the Trump family in Brooklyn were involved in an issue where they refused to rent apartments to black people. He's insulted the Mexican race. He insulted a judge because of his ethnicity. In a 1991 book by John O'Donnell, president of a Trump hotel, he said Mr. Trump had made remarks about black people. He's insulted Mr. Obama about his origins. That's a complete... Darren, that's a bogus argument. That's no, a bogus like argument. Reality. It's a bogus... But, but, Darren, that was about... In... Darren, that argument was about nationality and had Obama been born in the USA and therefore did he qualify to be president. Um, and, and the Mexicans' point you make. So, so what is it he said about Mexicans that you think is racist? 
He condemned them all as murderers and drug dealers. No, he didn't. He said some of them, some of them are really good people, but we're allowing in too many. And yes, he went on and talked about drug dealers and murderers and rapists. He said some of them are really good people. Was that just a cover? And what about his family refusing to rent apartments? Would, would you know something? He runs a huge business empire. Um, you know, and, 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 and to think that he personally is signing off renting flats in Brooklyn to any individual after looking at their credit rating is frankly ludicrous, isn't it? No, it all stacks up that he's approved racist and sexist and there's something about the dark about him. He might be a nice person, but... In re- oh. That's what you think, but in reality, right. I don't think well, so. Darren, the we all... evidence is there, he's da- a racist. Darren, fine, you have your view. I don't agree with you, but you have your view about Trump. Let me just ask you this. You know, he's made that statement today. Has he now gone far enough in his condemnation of these groups? Has he now, in many ways, set the record straight? Or is it simply, is there simply nothing he could say in your view that would ever be good enough? No. Surely you must admit that your friend on Saturday dragged his feet, and today the PR people behind him have pushed him out to make this. So should we condemn He's Justin Trudeau, Darren? Sorry? Should we condemn Justin Trudeau for saying... I'm about Trump and his racism. All right. Should we, and do you condemn Corbyn for saying there's equal blame on both sides in Venezuela? That was a totally different situation. I'm oh, looking at what Trump's saying. Trump so was dragging his feet, and <laughs> he's got approved racist past. So it's just so, the reality of it. So you're, I mean, you're obsessively reality. against him, aren't you? Absolutely, I think he's an American <laughs> disaster. And All right. Remember, Nigel, the majority of Americans, person by person, did not vote for this man. He's turned the White House into a circus. He's a huge racist, sexist clown. Well, Darren, I tell you what. Let it never be said that this show is not one that does not believe, as Americans do, in their First Amendment rights over there to free speech. We do here on LBC and on this show. And, Darren, I disagree very profoundly with what you've said, but you know what? I have let you say it. Uh, George from Newtonards in Northern Ireland is my final caller this evening. George, hello. Hello, Nigel. Look, I agree with what you said earlier about Trump, and uh, he he sort of way back both sides. But I think myself that he chickened out. He actually should have um, backed the the right wing. The le- the left wing is out of control, worldwide. Robert Murdoch and all his cronies, and their faults and fake news, and they need to be combated. And he had a chance today to. Stand up for the people that were protecting their heritage or trying to, but he just he just chickened out because he was probably advised to do so. Right, so he should have stuck to his guns, in your view, George. Yes, because he, those people were had a legitimate protest, and then they were confronted by this left wing mob of thugs. Well, well, well. And not a, not one paper has actually said a word about that. It, it would be reasonable to say, George, that whilst people have the right to protest, that there were elements... I mean, and obviously we're allowed to disagree with each other, but there were elements um, of this protest that were pretty unsavoury. I mean, people in 21st century Virginia, uh, you know, walking down the street with swastikas and raised right arms. Not very savoury, George, really, is it? No, I agree, but those people are red-blooded Americans. And they look, there's a long history about the Ku Klux Klan and all the rest of it, and I certainly don't agree with it. Not a very proud one, though, is it? to protest about the removal of the statue, like you mentioned also about Cecil Rhodes. Yeah. No, 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 no. He, people left people left do have a right to, George, of course. Never... Of course people, George, have a right to protest. Um, but actually, I don't agree, George. I think Trump, doing what he's done today... He could not be clearer about what his position is. The same goes for Pence, and the same goes, actually, for the rest of, you know, know, the Trump family and regime. Listen, it's been a pretty fiery debate. My final thoughts on this are uh, that, yes, I was as shocked as anybody to see those scenes in Charlottesville, uh, but for goodness sake, let's not rewrite history. Uh, That leads to bad things happening on all sides. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, back tomorrow at 7, coming up at 10, it's Ian Collins, but up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you.